never say it's not a snob. I just well, well, I wouldn't want to stress you. It's all like yeah, yeah. If it makes you feel any better, I can make an appearance on stuff you like. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I best get going. These things don't film themselves. Yeah. Thanks, Ursa. Speak soon. Bye. Right. Best get on to boss then. Oh, it's that funky type fella again. Hey up, Funkers. Ahoy, Bozzy. How goes? Ah, uh, not too bad. Women are plenty and broadband is quick. But I'm guessing that's not why you called me? Well, it's the season finale, you see. And I've not done a DC movie since Under the Red Hood. So I've decided to go with that Green Lantern movie. Yeah, I prefer Deadpool. Hang on. Another crossover? That Irish friend of yours turn you down? Didn't ask. It feels unfair to Ursa to keep asking her to be submissive to my whims or whatnot. I mean, she's got her own show. And she's got a baby now, so... Plus, of course, I still don't have any $10 subscribers. Ah, well, that's your problem, you see. Ten US dollars is a lot of dough for a one-camera setup. Even if it's supposed to be meant for expansion. Uh, but if you give me a minute, I can summon up Mr. Edward. For your needs. Oh, that sounds fun. If it's free. Well, anyway, I'll leave you to set up your Usnet relays. See you in a few. And I'm Boz. And I'm Edward. And he's Edward. And he's Boz. And these fine gentlemen are Boz and Edward. They'll be my co-hosts for this episode. Anyway, welcome to my house of love. Yes, another season has come and gone, and I've decided to finish in traditional style with another DC Comics movie. Now, Ryan Reynolds has had his ups and downs in this business of show and has surely fronted his share of less than stellar flicks. But we wouldn't even be talking about him if we weren't going to mention his turn as Hal Jordan. Yes, the House of Love's season finale is that much maligned flick, Green Lantern. Mr. Edward, if you'd care to do the honours? Why, with pleasure. Released in 2011, Green Lantern is an origin story for Hal Jordan, who receives a ring from a dying alien, and is suddenly whisked away to a world of adventure, but he'll have to deal with the twin evils of Hector Hammond and Parallax. Although this one didn't do so well at the box office, but we'll probably get to that later. That we will, bozzy old chum. But before we begin... I should mention that today we'll be looking at the Blu-ray extended cut of this movie, simply from my own preference, if nothing else. With that declared, calm your fears and grab your rings, because it's a long, strange trip when you're Sector 2814's Green Lantern. After a brief recap of Necessary Backstory... And if you don't know your Green Lantern lore, look it up! I mean, it's the 21st century, people! It's not hard! 
we're introduced to our main villain, Parallax, the spirit of fear. Oh, a big yellow cloud, so scary. Yeah, not so great. I've seen worse. Ah, awesome, awesome. And Parallax wastes no time in going after his captor, legendary lantern, Abin Sur. But let us flash back to 1993 to meet our hero, Hal Jordan, and his friend, Carol Ferris. They're watching Papa Jordan test out a new plane. But oh dear. Oh, that's just cruel, that is. I mean, he brings it down safe. Good landing you can walk away from. And then the whole thing explodes on him. 50 demerits. Back in the present, and that prang didn't dent Hal's ambition to follow in his father's footsteps. And while his quick thinking brings personal victory, it also proves that the all-new Sabre 3 roboplanes aren't quite ready for the world yet. Which, of course, doesn't make him popular with management. Then the story pops up again as Alvin Sir's ring makes its way to our hero and brings Hal to the dying Sir. So I'm guessing Parallax wounded Alvin Sir, just like the comics. And so the US government get their hands on Abin Sir's corpse, bringing one Hector Hammond in to study it. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. <sighs> Terribly, I take it. Got it in one, Bozzy boy. Us Midland folk have low expectations. Well, set your sights low and you'll never let down. Hal learns the oath. And after a round of drinks with Carol, he learns something else. So now the ring takes Hal to Oa, center of the galaxy, where we meet Tom Are and Hal gets trained by the universe's nastiest drill sergeant. Ah, yes. Kilowog of Bolovax Vic. Taskmaster, drill sergeant, but if you impress him, he's the greatest and most loyal ally you could ever wish for. But it's all too much for a shell-shocked human to take in. And Hal heads home. A few nights later, he's invited to a shindig. Well, looks like they got the contract. Yeah, they put 20% extra in the roboplanes, and Hal did break the ROE. So, you know, it works out. And you gotta love that hot rod red. But Hector Hammond is also here. And he's got a few new tricks up his sleeve. Hang on. Where did he get telekinesis from? Ah, uh, when he went to examine Alan Sir, he got zapped in the finger by Parallax. Pay attention. Ah, yeah, like you do. Luckily, our hero is on hand and saves the day. Even if his mask isn't so much of a disguise. Which leads us to another House of Love top tip. If you really must hide your identity, we recommend a full face mask. And a voice changer that changes your voice so dramatically that you really do sound like someone else. But even as Hal's star rises, exposure to Parallax energy is doing quite the number on Hammond. I've never felt better in my life. And he won't be contained. And even as our hero intervenes, <laughs> Parallax itself swears doom on Earth. Destroy the Guardian. But Hal's having none of it, and after a pep talk from Carol, Courage. He flies to Oa to ask the Corps for the chance to save his home world. Back on Earth, Hal tries a bait and switch with the ring. You have to be chosen. Classic ploy that. If only they'd employed something like that in the Massacre of 92. The Massacre of 92. I mean, I was only 12 when I heard about it. I'm not surprised it's filtered into public consciousness since. Nothing seems to stay secret these days. But there's no time to catch up, 
as Parallax has reached Earth. So it's up to Sector 2814's new Green Lantern to finish what his predecessor started. Which he manages by luring it into the sun, then bashing it a good un. And that, if you were wondering, is one way to deal with massively powerful space clouds. Seriously, what is it with Hollywood and massively powerful space clouds? And so our movie ends with Hal being honoured by the core, getting a little closer to Carol, and heading off to new adventures. Sadly, with the DC Extended Universe in play, we won't see any more new adventures for this version of the Green Lantern. But let's get some opinions for what we do have. Mr. Edward. For me, this movie was good in its own way. The moral seems to be to face your fears rather than trying to train them away. They mentioned something about the lanterns not fearing anything, yet Alvin Sir seemed to flee for his life when he met Parallax, making me believe they are denying that they have fear more than anything. Also, there was a moment when I thought of this as a Superman version 2.0. While well, no one saw through Clark's glasses, some instantly saw through Hal's mask. Other than that, I like the idea of willing things into existence. Well, who doesn't? And green is supposed to be the color of creativity. Overall, a good movie. So here we are. The big, spacey epic that introduced us to the concept and lore of the Green Lanterns. Honestly, I don't think this movie's that terrible. A cinematic masterpiece? No. Is it good? Yes. The entire movie rests upon Ryan Reynolds, playing to type as uh, Ryan Reynolds. And for me, this is why it works. Though, having said this, the old complaint of Originitis is writ large over this film, and the main villain, being the embodiment of fear itself, if that's what one could call what is essentially a giant space cloud, is far too large. Because where do you go from there? Perhaps they'd have figured it out with change stakes had the numbers added up to a sequel. As to the rest of the cast, Tim Robbins and Angela Bassett are wasted, Blake Lively is a passable leading lady, tough in places, more concerned in others. Peter Sarsgaard's Hector Hammond is very much the distinctly secondary villain, all longing for the girl, revenge on daddy, I am my own human being. The flow of this movie isn't helped by the extra 10 minutes of Hal's dad crashing in 1993. And even apart from this, the focus does flip from hero to villain at times, though it manages to hold together, as the sequence of events is always clear, even if I feel they were rushing to bring it to an end with the sequence on Oa, and the Hugh Horned romantic subplot tie-up, and the effects. I wouldn't mention them separately, but at times, this movie was more of a CGI animated movie than it was live action, and of course I understand the necessity given the mind-boggling range of races from across the universe that make up the core, but I wouldn't have minded if they'd gone the whole hog and made the Oa sequences entirely CG, including Hal. Though, again, having said this, the makeup jobs on Abin Sur and Sinestro were spectacular, and really enhanced the believability of the movie. Overall, then, the story is yet another origin, the effects will age, but they still look okay to 2017 eyes and Ryan Reynolds was never really right for Hal Jordan. But in spite of all this, it's still a damn good watch, a great way to spend 114 minutes, and a triumph for director Martin Campbell. So yes, while it's definitely flawed, it's very entertaining, which is, of course, the most important thing. And for this reason, I'm going to put 2011's Green Lantern into my house of love. So then. If I am taken from this earth before I get the chance to appear again in front of a camera, I'd like to thank all of my patrons and all of my viewers old and new for choosing my house of love. And of course, I'd like to thank my co-hosts today and over all these seasons for choosing to appear with me. For now though, you have been watching Edward, SFM artist and such. You can check me out here. Oz of the BBKB for my co-host Kate Bit. You'll have to get your Ursa to have a word.
But for now, remember to tune in 8pm CET every Wednesday on Slay Radio and visit the IRC uh, channel Slay Radio on the FNet network if you're so inclined. But just a little warning, the language can get a little blue. And of course, Funky Monkey of the House of Love. 100 plus episodes on YouTube and the first two seasons are uncut on vid.me. And that, my friends, is season six. So for my co-hosts, Edward and Boz, I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days, great entertainment, and the hope of a better world. So long, folks. <laughs>